Hello everybody, it's Mrs Gaines and I'd like to read you chapter 23 please. There was before and after, and this was after. A bright light flooded everything, and when it faded, Lily felt an empty aching heart-shaped stillness in her chest. Mama was standing before Lily, holding a rosewood box. She was just as she'd looked when Lily had seen her, the seen her last. My darling, Mama said, opening the lid of the box. These things are for you. What things? Lily looked into the box. It was empty. You have them already, Mama said. Lily felt in her pocket and was surprised to find the various objects there. Her mother's ring and her lock of hair and the photograph and the stone. She took out the stone and looked at the golden fossil at its centre. Just like you, Mama said, you carry part of Papa and me within you. I don't mean just the cock art, but your lineage. Who are who you are, your values and ideas. Everything you'll you'll everything you'll be, and more besides. You're something special, my tiger. Lily replaced the stone and the other things in her pockets. But she asked what am I supposed to do? Mama smiled and kissed Lily's cheek. Go back into the world and finish what you started. But I don't know how, Lily said. Trust your heart. It will make the right choices. Mama put a hand on Lily's chest and Lily felt a warm energy suffuse her. And fight, Lily, fight for your life. It's what I want for you. A wind blew up between them and Mama's hand retreated and was gone. Lily felt herself being sucked into a golden tessellating pattern of snow. It seemed to fill her head and the world around her. Then she heard a sound, a sound that made one persistent, precise, needle-sharp noise. Tick, tick, tick. The beat of the cockerel fighting to keep pumping, fighting through the damage. Done fighting to keep its cogs turning, fighting to keep her alive. With a hacking cough and a splutter, Lily opened her eyes and she was greeted by a mist of sameness. She recognised nothing. None of the forms around her seemed familiar and she couldn't even separate from one, one, one another. Then gradually they came into focus. A head lolled against a pillow. She was being wheeled on a stretcher along a corridor of an airship, Beaumont, with Papa walking, walking bound at her side. You're all right, he whispered. The perpetual mo motion machine is still working, thank heavens. Lily nodded, rosily. She was certain now all this had occurred before. Portholes dotted the walls and through the gl glinting glass she could make out the blue-grey waters of the Thames the snake-like soul of the city. A terrible thing happened, my dear, Professor Silverfish said, stepping alongside her, blocking her view. I shot you in the heart, in the precise, in, in the precious cock heart. But the good news is, it's still functioning. You're still alive. So now I'm going to take out your heart and to use it to replace this one. He tapped the machine on his chest. After all, I need my upgrade machine. Professor Silverfish laughed. How does that sound? Drowsily, Lily wondered if she could run. But then she realised she wasn't even standing. Dark figures gathered. The profiles ringed by halos. Or was it the, sun, the setting sun flashing in the portholes behind them? Before she could decide, the hands reached down to lift her from the stretcher and across a threshold into darkness. Clouds streamed past Robert in streaks of grey and pink. He clutched Melkin in his chest and he arrowed towards the target, hurtling into Beaumont's shadow. The gas envelope loomed large ahead. The line was screwing into the skewing to, too close to the propeller. His heart pumping in his throat, Robert grasped the brake lever and squeezed hard. The brake screeched, refused to lock. With seconds to impact, Robert pumped them again. In a whiff of burning, they clamped the line, jerking him to a stop. 
a hand's breadth from the Zeppelin's whirring propeller. Woom, 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 woom. The sharp turning blade glanced past inches from his head. Melkin whined softly as Robert gulped in great gasps of air and clawed a metal at the metal maintenance ladder. His fingers brushed against the ice encrusted metal. If he could just stretch a little further. A crosswind knocked him sideways, but he managed to grasp the ladder, clipping and grappling hook onto his frame. He climbed across the loop the looped and out sorry. He climbed across and looped an elbow over the prop support strut, just as the storm finally hit. A barrage of raindrops pounded his head and his jacket and pinged off the metal motor casing and turning blades. Robert felt in his j jacket pocket beneath the lump of the, the lump of the fox for his penknife. He cut his slide rope loose and it fell away into the grey abyss beneath with a noise like a flailing whip. Under the whoosh of the prop blades and the tapping of the rain, he thought he could just make out a putter of ladybirds engines. He glanced over his shoulder and glimpsed downwind, banking away. The broken shard